So we are talking about input ups. international commercial terms these are given by whom ICC. ICC is International Chamber of Commerce. So all the countries which have signed the GET agreement, General Agreement of Terror and Trade, all those are considered as a member of International Chamber of Commerce. And all of them, except whatever is given by ICC, because all representative of all the countries are there. Decisions taken by them, by it is common. But this is not binding any recommendation made by icc it is only advisory if that is recommended it is not binding on any country right so what happens international commercial terms which we are going to talk about you may enter into a contract with the in terms or without the in terms it is your choice right so in terms are provided by itc Right now, when it is provided by ITC, what is the impact of that? Impact of that remains that interpretation of these terms remain common throughout the world. These are universal terms. So when these terms are used, reference of ICC in quote terms is given, then the reason for dispute does not arise. Difference of opinion is not there because the meaning is very, very clearly given. So these in quote terms, these are purely optional. So the buyer and seller may agree on in quote terms or they can decide something on their own. It is up to them. But if they go as per in quote terms, and there is any difference of opinion or you can say there is a dispute between them under the contract then on the subject related to in quote terms matter can be resolved by icc how are all? matter can be resolved by icc icc is also a dispute resolution body but that that is again it is that is also optional so again you can add ICC may help to resolve a trade dispute pertaining to <clears throat> input another advantage of adopting icc or, or rather the input terms input terms have universal application so the reason for difference of opinion also does not arise. It is always, always better to know the input terms. And slowly these are being adopted in the domestic trade also. 
as of now we are talking about inco terms later on those will become commercial terms only in will in which will be in it will be removed because these are so important to understand that later on there is no reason for a dispute what is there in the inco terms inco terms refers to and no relation with what does it relate to or what does it refer to this relates to place of delivery this talks about passing of the risk of loss this talks about cost of transportation cost of insurance place of delivery passing of the risk cost of transportation cost of insurance anything other than that is not dealt by inco terms so inco terms does not talk about no relation with quantity quality price time of payment guarantee warranty nothing is covered in inco terms what is covered basically insurance and transportation along with that the place of delivery where the risk passes from the seller to the buyer these terms are there in the inco terms so inco terms does not talk about quantity of the goods quality of the goods price time of payment etc etc and the most important thing is this is only about the goods nothing about the service only about goods <clears throat> okay is this basic concept clear yes, hmm? so how many inco terms are there in total there are total 11 terms and the ppt which i have shared with you the diagrams in that are giving you very clear picture what is the meaning of that particular in quota okay so now let us go to that ppt so either you have print out or you can refer on the laptop whatever you have or here i am showing that this is here can you see this clearly yes okay so in co terms mm 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 
So in quote terms, what exactly it means? It means issues pertaining to cost, risk, and responsibility. Cost of what? Transportation. Cost of? Transportation. Cost of? Insurance. Insurance. Okay. Risk of what? Risk during risk the of transportation, risk loss. of loss, right? Loss. Responsibility. Who will take that responsibility of arranging the transportation? Who will, who will procure the insurance? All that. Okay, so these are very important questions to be discussed in the international contracts. And if it is missed out, huge cost is involved in this. What are income terms rules? Important responsibilities of the buyer and seller. The, the, actually, it's a huge document. ICC has released a complete book on INCO terms. And you will be surprised to know that the cost of the course offered in INCO terms by ICC is costing you 30,000 rupees. Kitna? Hmm? 30,000 for this course only. Right. And entire material I do have with me. And if you want to read the whole thing, you can read. But otherwise, what I'm, what I'm sharing in this lecture today, that is enough to understand in quotas. Okay. Now, when you get into practice, you will certainly learn more. The in terms will describe who does what. Means what is to be done by the buyer and what is to be done by the seller. But that is only and only in relation to two things, insurance and transportation. Sure. Place of delivery is certainly covered. So place of delivery, if it is in India or it is abroad, that will make the difference. That will determine the responsibility where and who will do the custom clearance, right? So just understand very small thing. If the place of delivery is in India, if the goods are handed over to the, to the buyer here in India, before the goods are loaded on the vessel, who will do the custom clearance? Suppose you are you are coming from abroad to my shop and buying some goods from me. You want to take it abroad, and custom clearance is required. Who will do the custom clearance? Buyer will do the custom. Clearance. Actually, the buyer will do, right? But if it is already agreed upon that as a seller. I'm giving you goods, but the responsibility of the custom clearance, I take it. Right. So that has to be agreed. That has to be understood. Otherwise, what is the meaning implied that once I have sold the goods from my shop, now I'm not no more concerned with them with the goods. But it may be agreed upon. So these terms are made for that purpose. So you don't have to negotiate. You don't have to discuss. Simply agree on which terms you are going ahead with. Okay. So custom clearance also becomes important. So when... Initially, I did not tell you about the custom clearance because I told you about the place of delivery. If the place of delivery is in India, that is one part of the place of delivery is abroad, that is another. So in place of delivery in India, then again, two things. Who will do the custom clearance in India? If the place of delivery is abroad, who will do the custom clearance there? Right? So th that is also an important issue in the these terms. So in quote terms, describe who does what. Transfer of risk. All the input terms are based on the principle that risk of loss, dam damage due to an accident, war, weather, etc. is transferred from the seller to the buyer when seller has fulfilled the obligations according to the applicable terms. It is important to note that this point can be different point at which the seller is responsible for paying for the carriage too. Commercial risk, is, that is payment, is not regulated by quota. So that I've already spoken about the price, the time of payment, etc. That is not regulated by quota. So quota is regulating what? What is being regulated by quota? Now clear the board. Now you tell me what is being regulated by the quota? Number one. First thing, what is regulated? Delivery. Place of delivery. Place of delivery. Then cost insurance cost. Cost of insurance. Yes. And and freight rules. And freight. 
okay now there is also difference the understand the difference suppose i say insurance so as far as input terms are concerned for that purpose we can divide the insurance in two parts up to place of delivery and after the place of delivery right suppose i have a factory in pune and delivery is to be given in mumbai i hand over the delivery to the customer in mumbai but the cost of transportation and the cost of insurance between pune and mumbai who will pay that logically speaking up to place of delivery this is by the seller and after the place of delivery once goods are handed over to the customer then the risk passes on to the buyer and therefore he will have to pay and after the place of delivery again this is divided in two part which is called main transport and other transport main and other so you will get the terminology main transport main transport means what from the port of export in india up to the port of arrival in the in the in, in the destination country so this is port of export in india up to port of arrival in the country of destination okay so main transport is a different word so main transport means exactly what so i've given you example shipping the goods from pune to mumbai there is one part from mumbai to the country of the destination that is called main transport that may be by air that may be by road that may be through the sea depending upon the very different places okay so in co terms mainly talk about main transport it doesn't talk about this it doesn't talk about this so insurance in the in co terms is about the main transportation same is about the transportation also the main transportation so insurance and the transportation these are again same main transport and main insurance so the risk passes risk which are to be covered at now this is something to understand what we are talking about clarity of the cost between the seller and buyer which cost we have to consider just read you are not supposed to remember this first is packaging checking marking of goods loading of the goods at the first carrier which is the first carrier quite possible the goods are coming from the factory up to the warehouse from warehouse it goes up to the port so first carrier is shipping of the goods or transportation from the factory to the warehouse then in land transportation pre carriage to the transport center so this is between pune and mumbai safety requirements to the place of delivery cost and expense of the export clearance so this is also a cost involved terminal cost 
main transport now see this word this is what i was explaining what is the meaning of main transport so don't get confused about this what is the meaning of the main transport this is a transportation between the port of export up to the port of arrival in the in the destination country insurance transport insurance is to be taken terminal cost at the in the destination country then cost and other co expenses there inland transportation in the origin in the country of destination unloading cost now this is one issue on which layman is always having a reason for dispute who should incur the cost of unloading have you heard any kind of dispute in this how many of you are working in the industry mr wilson yes sir what your experience is about the unloading who should incur the cost of unloading actually uh, basically it is a importer who takes the cost hmm. so no transaction on dpu basis pardon me no transaction on dpu basis Uh, no, it was DAP. Normally, basically, we were using on DAP position, the 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 delivery at place. Hmm. So you know there are situations where the truck containing the goods arrive in the factory, and there is a dispute between the seller and the buyer who will unload the goods at the factory of the buyer. Can you think that the the it can be a reason for dispute? it is when the quantity is a large and it is a regular business this itself is a cost so whether the goods will be delivered unloaded at the destination or the goods will be unloaded by the buyer so that also we are going to see that in the in the uh, these in quotas okay so all these costs are relevant which create a reason for dispute and that is classified in in quotas So, in good terms, rule cover all obligations, the risk, and the responsibilities of the buyer and seller. And those are listed A one to A ten and B one to B ten. So, these documents, in any case, you are not supposed to read. So, don't consider about this slide now. In good terms, depending upon the mode of transportation, I have divided those in two categories. Any mode of transportation, these are seven categories: X works, FCA one, FCA two, CPT. CIP, DAP, DPU, DDP, and only water. That is FAS, FOB, CFR, CIR. ये सारी terms आपको याद करना है. ठीक है? अभी option one, option two, what is it? अभी आएंगे ना पर आगे explain कर रहे हैं. ये तो केवल introduction है. Oh. Okay. तो ये सारी terms आपको याद करना है. ये बड़ी important चीजों को. और एग्जाम में जनरली जब इस तरह के क्वेश्चन आते हैं तो उनको आउट ऑफ सिलेबस क्वेश्चन लोग मान लेते हैं नॉन मैंडेटरी रूल दिस आई ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू दैट इनको टर्म्स रूल्स एस्टेब्लिश बाय द आईसीसी दैट आर यूज्ड इन इंटरनेशनल सेल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ऑफ गुड्स नाउ सी द वर्ड्स व्हाट फॉर इट इज यूज्ड ओनली एंड ओनली फॉर गुड्स नॉन मैंडेटरी रूल्स दीस रूल्स मे बिकम बाइंडिंग एंड हैव लीगल इफेक्ट ओनली इफ दे आर एक्सक्लूसिवली इनकॉर्पोरेटेड इन द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट So the rules are binding only if incorporated. Those are not having automatic applicability. So, like the law of the country, any transaction taking place in India, right? So Indian laws automatically apply. But inco terms are not in the same nature. If it is referred in the contract, then it will be governed by the ICC inco term. And which term? Until then, these are not applicable. No inco terms rule do not prescribe for. What is not prescribed? See here. The specification of the goods. I said quantity, quality, transfer of ownership, time, method, currency of payment, export, import, sanctions and prohibitions, remedies for the breach of contract. All these are not there in the input terms. Input terms are only talking about very limited thing: passing of the risk, place of delivery, cost of insurance, cost of transportation, and the matter related to that. Nothing beyond that. now these are divided into four categories and i have given different options how do you, how do you want to remember that e category f category c category d category so these are not alphabetically arranged that is depending upon different concept so e category x works f category fca and fas fob fob is understood fob to sabko pata hoti hai nahi pata 
एनीवे anyway, चलो भी आगे समझ में आ जाएगा धीरे धीरे क्योंकि आगे जो डायग्राम्स हैं वो बड़े काम के हैं ये जो नंबर हैं ये डिटेल्ड डॉक्यूमेंट में ही सारे नंबर्स तो ये नंबर्स आपको याद करने की कोई जरूरत नहीं है ये भी नहीं चाहिए हाँ अब यहां पर आते हैं एक्स वर्स सब कुछ इन डॉक्यूमेंट इन डायग्राम्स में है इस डायग्राम को ध्यान से देखिएगा जो भी कुछ ब्लू में है अप टू दैट पॉइंट द रिस्क एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इज ऑफ द सेलर एंड वॉट एवर इज इन येलो कलर द कॉस्ट द रिस्क एंड रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इज ऑफ द बायर ये कलर ही सब कुछ डिफाइन कर देगा अगर आपने ध्यान से देखा तो सो इन केस ऑफ एक्स वर्क वेयर द गुड्स आर केप्ट द गुड्स एट द सेलर प्लेस इज इट लोडेड ऑन द कन्वेन्स और नॉट नो आप ध्यान से बात केवल डायग्राम को इंटरप्रेट करना है पूरी स्लाइड आप या पढ़ो मत पढ़ो कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता लेकिन अगर ये डायग्राम्स आपने अच्छे से समझ ली तो अंडरस्टैंड डायग्राम्स केयरफुली एवरी कंसेप्ट अबाउट दिस इनको टर्म्स विल बी क्लियर टू यू एवरीथिंग इज बेस्ड ऑन कलर डू नॉट मिस द कलर्स ओके इफ यू टेक अ ब्लैक एंड व्हाइट प्रिंट आउट देयर इज अ रीजन फॉर कंफ्यूजन सो बेटर यू सीट ऑन द लैपटॉप ओके सो दिस ब्लू इज शोइंग द सेलर Black is showing the consignment of the goods. So yellow is showing the buyer. So whatever is in yellow, the risk, the cost, everything is to be borne by the buyer. Right. And blue means seller. Sure. So in case of in the case of X works, the cost of keeping the goods ready for delivery, and the risk of the goods up to the point of delivery. So which is the place of delivery? works only works means sellers place sellers of factory not sellers place it is very specific it is a factory because the next time talk about some other place also okay okay so this is sellers of factory okay so the seller is having the risk and responsibility only till keeping the goods are ready for delivery loading is also not the responsibility of the buyer who will arrange the cost of who will arrange the transport the buyer the buyer buyer has to arrange for the transportation who will incur the cost of uh, cost of loading buyer the buyer only right and who will buy who will buy the insurance for the transportation buyer buyer only okay and who will complete export formalities buyer everything is in yellow राइट right. तो आप इसको सिंपल एग्जांपल समझ लीजिए कि आप जाके किसी दुकान से कोई सामान खरीदते हैं दुकानदार की जिम्मेदारी वहीं पर खत्म हो जाती है सामान आपको दिया और पैसे लिए एवरीथिंग इज ओवर दुकान से निकलते ही सामान गिर गया पूरा सत्यानाश हो गया विद सेलर इज हैविंग एनी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी नॉट एट ऑल एग्जैक्टली सेम दिस इज एक्स वर्क बट द प्रॉब्लम हेयर इज द बायर विल हैव टू पे दैट ऑल द लोकल टैक्स इज एप्लीकेबल बिकॉज दिस इज ट्रीटेड एज ए डोमेस्टिक सेल If the goods are exported later on, who can claim the refund of GST? Seller. Seller cannot claim the refund because he has sold the goods domestically. It is only the buyer who will have to claim the refund of GST. So practically, in international business, you will never find this stuff. You will never find. राइट right? इस पर तो बड़ा एक इंटरेस्टिंग केस बना था काफी पुराना केस और आउट ऑफ इंडिया का केस है आई जस्ट एक्सप्लेन यू ताकि ये एक्सपर्ट कंसेप्ट प्रैक्टिकली खत्म क्यों हो गया दैट वाज दैट इज द रीजन फॉर द केस केस बना था नोकिया का नोकिया कंपनी कहां की है कोरिया हम कोरिया स्वीडन कोरिया इट्स स्वीडन स्वीडन कंपनी स्वीडिश राइट तो ये जब कंपनी से जब वहां पर उन्होंने कुछ एक लार्ज कंसाइनमेंट डोमेस्टिक सेल कर दिया एक्स वर्क में एंड द लॉ ऑफ दैट कंट्री एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम अलाउड दैट यू कैन सेल द गुड्स फॉर एक्सपोर्ट विदाउट टैक्सेस सो दे सोल्ड अ लार्ज कंसाइनमेंट टू समबडी 
in that country without taxes with the understanding that consignment is going to be exported and the, that party sold the same consignment in the same country at a discounted price ho sakta hai ya nahi ho sakta usne khareed liya khareedne ke baad us saman ka kya karega wo usko us par koi obligation nahi hai thereafter throughout the world it's a practice that goods are not sold exports for the purpose of export okay so this diagram do you have any reason for confusion in this diagram see it carefully and if you have any question ask me this because if you understand this diagram then you under, you will understand other diagrams as well see carefully can i presume everything is clear yes sir okay additional rules chhod dete hain now fca fca stands for free carrier now in this free carrier what is done there are option 1 and option 2 in the option 1 see this what is given here in the option 1 kya difference aaya pehle wale mein aur usme डिफरेंस यहां देखिए यहां पर सामान कहा रखा है where are the goods goods are not loaded and the delivery is given to the buyer in this case goods have been loaded right that is the only difference nothing else so here inside now which place fcs is you will have to give the name of the place now this in this it is not necessary that this is only factory it can be some other place as well so that's why here we are what we are showing is some other place has been specified and that is a place belonging to the seller so seller decides the place where he will give the delivery it is not factory it may be some other place so the, from the factory up to the place of delivery the risk and responsibility is of the seller and thereafter the risk and responsibility of the buyer right but here what changes is who will complete the export formalities the major change who will complete the export formalities so who is going to complete export formalities the seller it is the seller right and in the country of destination certainly the import formalities will be completed by the buyer so here two options are there if there is no in the option number 1 the place of delivery to the buyer is the factory itself but goods are loaded by the seller in the second option some other place decided by the seller not the buyer by the seller himself and the cost of transportation the risk up to the place of delivery is borne by the buy, by the seller and thereafter everything is borne by the buyer now see here this is called carriage paid carriage paid means cost of transportation is being borne by the who is bearing the cost of transportation seller seller How come? Guess you have to decide. Okay, seller pay kar raha hai. So blue color did not sell. Yeah, but that is what I want to uh, want to make you understand that everything is shown in colors, and if you give attention on the color, answer will be ready to you. 
So in this, the cost of transportation is paid by the seller. But the risk is not borne by the seller. Where is the place of, what is the place of delivery in this case? At the destination place. Hmm? Destination port. Up to destination port. Up to the destination port. Where the, loading. Risk, where the risk is passing? Once the goods are loaded, the risk passes to the buyer. Who will buy the insurance? Buyer. Buyer, buyer will buy the insurance. Okay. Seller is only paying the cost of transportation. So either he can arrange or buyer can arrange, but the cost of transportation will be paid by the seller. That is the only difference here. Risk is being passed on to the customer at the place of delivery itself. Okay. So therefore, the cost of insurance has to be borne by the buyer. Right. So when the delivery is going to be beyond a place, the export formalities are completed by the seller so except x works everywhere else the export formalities will be completed by the seller i hope this one is clear meaning is clear or not because yaad to karna padega bhi aapko So I can presume certain things. In a CIP, carriage and insurance paid. Now in this case, what is the difference? Insurance. The biggest one in this one, what is the difference? Now see this one. The cost of transportation Transport. paid by the seller. Transportation insurance cost and insurance cost. Cost of transportation and insurance both are being borne by the seller, but the risk is being passed on to the buyer at the place of delivery itself. See here, the cost of transportation and the cost of insurance is being paid by the seller. But who's bearing the risk? Risk of damage, risk of loss. Whose risk it is? By, by the risk is of the buyer. Uh, sir, right? sir, one point to ask over here. Mm -hmm. Suppose in this particular circumstance, the insurance is taken by the seller. Mm -hmm. And if uh, the goods get damaged uh, mm -hmm. in, um, in transit, mm -hmm. Okay, he is having the insurance uh, policy. He can uh, get uh, claim of the insurance. But who will do the process of claiming the insurance? Whether it will be done by the buyer or it will be done by the seller? Now you claiming the process. Claiming process. Just, just a minute. Just a minute. Understand one thing. When we say the delivery, delivery means where the risk passes from the buyer, from the seller to the buyer, and it is defined in the document. So the place of delivery by the seller is or rather up to the place of delivery, risk is borne by the seller and after that the place of risk is borne by the buyer. So in this particular situation, if the goods are damaged during the course of transit, it is a logical question for you to answer who will be entitled to claim for the damages. Or rather even the first question, in whose name the insurance policy will be? Insurance policy will be in the buyer's name. So who will claim the insurance? Yeah, he will claim the insurance, but what I wanted to know the procedure because if this particular, suppose in transit, it is in the exporting country, the goods get damaged. Okay, the policy is in the name of the buyer, but for that particular purpose, the buyer is in the another country. Mm -hmm. Now, to make the claim uh, workable, the buyer has to go to the exporting country and do the procedure or no, the seller will do on this behalf. See, that is altogether a different issue. We can always authorize the seller himself as a representative to claim their claim for the insurance and get the money paid to him. That is altogether beyond this. Okay. So for claiming the money, he need not come personally on one-to-one -one basis. You can always authorize somebody else and tomorrow you can work as an agent for that purpose. Okay. Okay. Because once again, to make a claim for the insurance, it is basically a long process and it depends on country to country generally. No, no, or no. These are very well defined terms. If you understand the insurance clearly, it is very simple and straightforward procedure. Okay, so no complications involved. Only thing is that you may not get the value what you are expecting. It may be less, it may be more. But the valuation will be done by the registered valuer. 
Okay. Or something interesting, I'll tell you just now. So let us get ahead. Hmm. So in this, so the issue was, the question was raised that if there is a loss or damage of the goods in India, then who can claim insurance? So insurance claim can be made or claimed by the only by the person who is holding the insurance. And in this situation, the buyer is holding the insurance. Only he can claim. But it is not that he should be claiming that personally. He can always authorize somebody to make a claim on his behalf. Payment will always be made to the buyer. It is not going to be made to the representative. So he is not at a risk at all. Now, this is another delivery at place. What is the meaning of this one? In this case, what is happening? Entire risk is of seller. And the entire risk and cost is of seller. Of the seller. Right? At the place or rather in the country of destination, the formality of imports will be cleared by the buyer. But import formalities by the buyer. Import, uh, import is in that country of destination. So these formalities are completed by the buyer. But the seller is continuing a responsibility to deliver the goods at the place, place of the buyer whatever place he is designated but goods are not unloaded by the seller unloading is the responsibility of seller buyer buyer where the goods are see here this black square this is showing the goods where the goods are the goods have been taken by the seller up to the place of destination but unloading is not his responsibility so up to the delivery, up to the taking the goods up to the point of delivery, entire risk and cost is borne by the seller. Risk plus cost, both are borne by the seller. And the moment he gives an intimation to the buyer that goods have arrived, that moment onward, risk and responsibilities of the buyer. Okay. Now, see this one. What is the difference in the last one and this one? Unloading responsibility is also of seller. Unloading is also the responsibility of the seller. So you thought there pele when a question pucha the Mr. Wilson say DPU per kui agreement new. Right. So DPU means unloading will also be done by the seller and goods are unloaded. In the previous one, see this one. The goods are brought up to that place, but unloading is the responsibility of the buyer. So how minutely these have been defined? Very, very minute terms have been taken, have been taken into consideration for defining the terms. So in this case, entire risk and responsibility up to the unloading of the goods at the place of delivery in the country of destination is of the seller and thereafter the risk is of the buyer. So once unloaded, risk passes on to the buyer. DDP. In this situation, what is the difference? There is a very small confusion. Now, in this case, who is completing the import formalities? Seller. Import formalities. In the country. Buyer. Buyer, buyer, so buyer is doing it. So who will pay the duty? In buyer. Seller. Seller. Buyer will pay the duty. Imported duty. Seller will pay. Imported duty will be payable by the buyer. Who's completing import formalities here in the yellow? Buyer. Hey na? Ab yahi par ye difference dekhi. Ab yahan par kon pay kar raha hai? Seller. This is seller. Seller. Yes. This is the point of difference. So in this entire presentation, you have to focus only on these 11 diagrams 
And once these 11 diagrams are understood clearly, it means you have understood these input terms for the lifetime. So everything is defined in colors. That is the best thing here. Okay. So in this case, export formalities from India, then import formalities in the country of arrival and up to the place of delivery, entire cost and risk in the formalities are completed by the seller, but unloading is not done. FAS. Now, these are remaining four are only for water supply. FAS is free along the ship. In this case, the goods are delivered at the port, but not loaded. Goods are loaded at the, or goods are delivered at the port, right? But not loaded because there is a loading cost also. There's a terminal cost also. So, terminal cost and loading cost will be borne by whom? Buyer. By the buyer, right? So, place of delivery is along the ship. So, when we say along the ship, we don't mention only Mumbai port or we don't say only Navasiva port. We also define which terminal. Because so in the, the port, term, ter, this port is something big place. So, terminal is also defined. So, the vehicle goes up to that place and goods are delivered at that terminal only. If you have a Navasiva or a Mumbai port, then what will happen? So there is a reason for confusion. Mumbai port bar bar rakhe us container chhod ke chala gaya. Ab 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 andar ke tak karte ro. So everything is defined here. So when we say along the ship, so it is predetermined which vessel is going to come on which terminal, and goods have to be delivered at that terminal only, and the risk and cost to that place are completed by the seller, including the export formalities, and thereafter the cost and risk passes on to the buyer. <laughs> Now, FOB, what is the difference between previous one and this FAS and FOB? Once again, see this, where the goods are. Goods are at the port, not loaded. Right. In this case, where the goods are? Goods are, goods are loaded. In the vessel. Loaded, right. So, in the, in the previous one and the difference and the uh, FAS and FOB, what is the difference? In the FAS, goods are, goods are delivered at the terminal or along the, alongside the ship and the cost of the terminal and cost of the loading will be borne by the buyer and therefore risk passes on to the buyer. In case of FOB, up to the loading of the goods on the vessel, every cost and every risk is borne by the seller and thereafter everything is completed by the buyer. That is the FOB. CFR. CFR. Cost and freight. Right. So in this case, what is the what is up to the place of destination, or rather up to the port of arrival in the country of destination, the cost of transportation is borne by the seller, and the risk is passed on by the buyer to the buyer when the goods have been loaded on the vessel. Practically, this is also not seen. So ye bhi cheez aapko dekhne ko kahin milega nahi. It is just one term. This is something very common, very common. CIF. CIF stands for cost, cost increase freight up to the up to what? Port of destination. Only up to arrival of goods at the port of destination. Who will bear the cost of unloading? Buyer. Sir. Buyer. Buyer. The good diagram already like how they cry from goods camp are okay. Destination port goods are on the vessel, yes, right. So, unloading cost will be borne by the buyer, not by the seller. So, seller is paying the cost of transportation up to the place of arrival in the country of or destination, but the unloading and thereafter every cost is borne by the buyer. But as far as the risk is concerned. Risk is borne by the buyer after goods have been loaded at the in the vessel. Sir, why this green color is used? Green color donates what? Otherwise, it would have been blue. It's like which one? In that this, is just, that is just showing a vessel. There is no very specific color about the blue in the green. This no, is the cost, but the cost otherwise is by the seller. So. Normally, it's it's always in last all diagrams. It's blue. 
which one wherever the cost is borne by the seller the hmm. color is blue it is blue here it is green acha vessel color you are asking about oh, okay 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 vessel vessel up till the port of arrival is uh, by, borne by the seller also in this case yes. also, no? okay okay so this is cif value so these terms you have to see these diagrams again and again that's why i have shared the ppt itself so rather than showing rather than sharing the document so reading the document is a long term process which i don't want you to go into that okay so there may be one question or two questions in the exam on the basis of these terms but whether it is in the exam or not as an expert in customs law you should know these terms very clearly okay and for understanding these terms what do you need to do revision only slides baki detail kuch mat padho i can send you the detailed documents also but that is not required at all right there is a big book of around 400 pages but there is no reason for you to read the book if you want i can certainly share okay focus only on the diagrams diagrams have been prepared very carefully so that shows risk and responsibility of each and everything and the input terms are only about risk and responsibility nothing else okay